Hello, I'm David D. Hilser. I'm a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you are not science woke, then this is the place for you. No, I'm not talking about flat earthers, climate change deniers, or Trump. I'm talking about the Big Bang, relativity, plate tectonics, quantum mechanics, particle physics, anything fundamental to physics and cosmology. There are literally thousands and thousands of scientists from around the world that have been working for decades outside the mainstream who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and who are proposing new theories and models. You won't find anything like this on YouTube, so be sure you want to go down below and click on the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, and you'll be alerted to when our next video drops. Well, of course, you know, we always get these uh, uh, articles about Einstein being shown right again. And this one, of course, new study again proves Einstein right. Most thorough test to date finds no Lorenz violation in high energy neutrinos. Of course, you know me and neutrinos, uh, we don't get along since pretty much they are invented. I'll have, I'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later. Uh, but let's go on. I mean, just looking at that headline, Einstein was right. Okay, red flag. Most of the te most thorough test to date. Oh, we want to see what that's all about. Well, let's see here. Well, this is by Jennifer Chu, Massachusetts of Institute of Technology. Oh, wow. So she works at MIT. MIT. So her title entitles her to be right and us to be wrong. No, nope, no. Nope. Guess what? The CMPS our chief scientist is a woman who graduated from MIT in physics and relativity, and she is out there as a critical thinker saying, you know, we got to revisit Einstein because things ain't very what they seem. So this is the Ice Q Lab in the South Pole uh, so that, you know, they have a, a great look into the universe and the neutrino detectors out there. I guess they look, they're better when they're frozen. The universe should be predictably some a symmetrical place according to a cornerstone of Einstein's theory of special relativity known as Lorentz symmetry. This principle states that any scientist should have observed the same laws of physics in any direction and regardless of one's frame of resonance along as long as that object is moving at a constant speed. Well for the layman let me tell you a little bit what this means is that Einstein talked about uh, people in frames, things in frames. So if you're on a frame on a moving train like this and you're on the ground frame well then there's calculations between them Lorenz has calculations between them and all this stuff and that the, the laws of physics in any direction regardless of the frame of reference as long as that is moving at a constant speed because it accelerates oh my gosh then what happens but again uh, that's what that's what they're all saying and talking about for instance as a consequence of Lorenz symmetry you should observe the same speed of light, 300 million meters per second, whether you are an astronaut traveling through space or a molecule moving through the bloodstream. But for infinitesimally small objects that operate in incredibly high energies and over vast universe spanning distances, the same of rules of physics may not apply. Okay, here's this big thing they're setting up. Oh my gosh, and what are they talking about, this small objects? Well, that's the neutrino. So uh, that's what they're trying to set up like, well, they're setting up the problem. Maybe it doesn't apply to these things. And if it doesn't, oh my gosh, Einstein may be wrong. At these extreme scales, there may exist an, a violation of the Lorentz symmetry, or Lorentz violation in which a mysterious unknown field warps the behavior of these objects in a way that Einstein could not be predict. So we have this mysterious unknown field warping thing going on there, perhaps. So they've got this straw man, they have built it up nice and big and juicy that straw man that they're going to knock down i'm sure now mit scientists not just any scientists but mit scientists which you have to obey because they have their titles they cannot be wrong and their colleagues who may be wrong so <laughs> on the ice cube experiment have led the most thorough search yet to lorenz violation in neutrinos of course according to many of us, they don't exist. So what are we talking about? But we observe them. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Again, uh, in a massive neutrino there buried in Antarctic ice. Uh, the team searched for variations in normal oscillations of neutrinos that could be kept, that could be caused by a Lorenz violating field. Of course, burying it in ice, of course, you know why they bury neutrino detectors, so that they don't get false hits. So uh, I know it's hard to believe, but maybe what they're detecting are false hits. It's just to throw that in. According to their analysis, no such ab abnormalities were observed in the day, which comprises the, high, the highest energy atmospheric neutrinos that any experiment has collected. 
oh, I don't have my sound effects today. I've been on recursion a few days and I don't have them, but I go, Burr. that's what I would do in a boo. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Not prepared, but I want to get a video out here. I couldn't, couldn't believe this. So let's look at the truth of this whole thing, this whole article. And it here, it is here in which the answer lies about this article. It doesn't lie in the fact that anything they say is truth. It lies in the fact that people love tests of Einstein's theories, says Janet Conrad, professor of physics at MIT. See, they're, group, they're yelling this. And a lead author of the paper. I can't tell if people are cheering for him to be right or wrong, but he wins in this one. And that's kind of great. <laughs> You know, I don't know sometimes that maybe that we are making a, a, a splash out there that people are hearing this because maybe he wins this one. Maybe they're weaseling their words a little bit because they're starting to see like people like Dr. Cynthia Newithing from MIT. And you have to yell it because, I mean, that's really important. May say otherwise that Einstein stuff's all wrong. Then maybe she may even believe like neutrinos don't exist. Uh, anyways, uh, let's just keep going. Here's one just to give you. This, let's just say you don't know anything about the, the neutrino at all. You're coming in with a critically thinking mind. You believe that there are things, that, you know, things have to be real in the physical world. Neutrinos exist in three main varieties, or particle physics like to call them flavors. Flavored change, that's the name of it. You guys... This is, this is what people, this, people talk this way in physics classes and in articles right, right here. As the, neutrino travels, as the neutrino travels through space, its, its flavor can oscillate or morph into another flavor. I mean, guys, are we seeing any red flags here? Hello? Just read, on, just read neutrino stuff. You'll be blown away how stupid it is. And then, of course, I'm going to show you at the end where you should read about neutrinos because... We found an experiment that shows neutrinos don't, neutrinos don't exist, um, and it was done at a very famous university. The way neutrinos oscillate typically beyond a neutrino's mass or distance that is traveled. Depends on the neutrino's mass or the distance traveled. <laughs> but if Lorraine's violating field exists somewhere in space, it could interact with tree. Look at, listen to this. If, something, what are they making something up? Maybe someone made that up. I don't know, but... What are they, they're, this straw man is, they're just having to continue, continuously build this pretend problem up there. But if a violating field exists somewhere, exists somewhere in the universe, what? I'm just showing you critical think, uh, you critical thinkers or students of critical thinkers or newly becoming critical science woke people. This is crazy. Okay, let's just start looking at Trino because I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll have the last laugh from this uh, uh, article, but let's take a look at this. Go to neutrinos. I've got the link down below. Just look up neutrinos Wikipedia, and this is a picture of a neutrino. Uh, it isn't. In fact, if you look at it right here, it says, invisible neutrino collides with proton. Okay, that's very interesting and that's the proton path right there and then then even better look over in the middle it says what if you can't read it i'll read it for you neutrino transform into a mu meson yes folks uh, i'm not kidding the coll collision cr cl uh, creates a pi meson you know of course we have no idea what all, any of these things are but this is the world's first observation of neutrino in the hydrogen bubble chamber. And this is great because it was on my 10th birthday, November 13th, 1970. I was 10 years old. And I didn't know this incredibly bad science was going on. I was in bliss. I was, you know, watching the Apollo moon shots and all that stuff at that time and really loving science. But again, this goes to show you the invisible neutrino collides with the proton. It's a proton path. Neutrino transforms into mu meson and then collision creates a pi meson. Woohoo! That is so much fun. I mean, how many red flags can we have? So I want you to go to uh, uh, neutrinos.autodynamics.org. I have the link below. And you will see why neutrinos don't exist. And you're going to see uh, two sections, one's for physicists and one for laymen. In the physicist session, section, there is one by Vuchner and Van de Graaff. I believe it was done 
maybe at MIT or Caltech, I don't remember. It's done at a prestigious university and they show that in fact the electron mu uh, neutrino, the, the best one of all, the most certain of all, doesn't exist. But no, no one looks at that for some reason. And of course, if you are a, a layman, a lot of you people are just starting out, you can look at the neutrino origin. I put this together, and this is sort of old. It's got to be upwards of 20, 20 years old, but it's still a lot of it applies. So I just want to give you uh, some links. Look at it yourself. Be your own critical thinker. Take a look at neutrinos. And if you're a critical thinker in any way, shape, or form, you're going to see so many red flags about neutrinos. And of course, Karazani is... A, one of the great scientists of the 20th century, he unraveled this whole picture and in fact found the problem with Einstein's theory of relativity. You want to look at autodynamics.org, in my opinion. He's, he's my mentor. I don't do that just because my mentor, because I was a critical thinker. I didn't believe what he said until I read it, until I understood what he was saying. And in fact, I think I came up with a way to understand that he basically says there are no frames in the universe. There's only one three-dimensional space. You can't put frames and measure between them and call them Lorenz anything because the universe has just got events going on. There are no frames anywhere. And he, uh, and mathematically, he showed that mathematically and, phys and uh, physically so. Take a look at that. And I'm going to conclude here by the conclusion of the article itself to, again, itself, to show you why these articles really do come out. It says, every paper that comes out of particle physics assumes Einstein is right. And all the rest of our work builds on that, Conrad says. And to be very, and to a very good approximation, he is correct. It is a fundamental fabric of our theory. Here we go again. There's the fabric. There's the theory. What the heck is that? So trying to understand whether there are any deviations to this is a really important thing to do. In other words, we're going to set up there's something magical in the universe that would do, make this a little different, and we're not going to find it. So therefore, it proves Einstein right again. So in other words, Einstein says this ball is going to stay, stay in front of me as long as I hold it. And then if um, the, uh, there's a mysterious um, galoofer out there, and if that galoofer comes and hits out, hits this out of my hand that violates the symmetry that is of all physics is the same and there shouldn't be galoofers and we found out there are no galoofers and therefore Einstein's theory is shown correct again think of it think of it and remember what I say stay critical stay thinking I'm David D. Hilster I am your science therapist trying to get you science woke ciao for now